Hello, tank mates. This is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. Uh, this is my 75-gallon tank. I, most of you have seen it. I put up a, a build video on it uh, a couple months back and then an update video on it. Well, yesterday? No, over the weekend, I watched Adrian's Fish Room uh, video, and he was doing a redo for a friend of his, a neighbor, and one of the things he added was a permanent drain line. And so what I do when I do a water change on this, I run a hose to it, get a siphon started and do, you know, get that going. Uh, I really like the idea of the permanent drain line because it's always charged. And all you got to do is open it and water comes out and it'll drain down as, as low as you set the bottom of this permanent drain line. And that'll be about where my finger, well, probably about here. You can stop at any time. Or what I plan on doing is open that drain line up. It'll connect to a garden hose. Um, and then open that drain line up and just put the garden hose in, another garden hose into it and let it fill and let it sort of cycle like it had a, you know, um, a regular all-in-one, you know, fill and, and drain system. Uh, might make it easier. And that way I can just sort of set it up to a fill and drain simultaneously, walk away for even an hour or so, and, and let it do big water changes. And I'm hoping, you know, those kind of water changes will help these bronze quarries that are floating around in here somewhere uh, spawn. Because uh, I keep hearing, you know, do five water, or do water changes daily for a week. And that'd be a whole lot easier if I could set that up. So, and then I'm gonna do it, uh, assuming I can make this happen and make it work, uh, I'm gonna do this in a, um, a couple other things too that I have quarries, so, uh, mature quarries, and see if I can get them to spawn that way. Because otherwise, you know, the way the way I've been doing it, it, it's not that tough, but it is a lot of work to do water changes. So I figured this might just make it easier. So anyway, I'll take you through the steps. All right, well, this is a really rudimentary draw but maybe it'll get the point across. So if this is the aquarium, let me stick the pencil in here. This is the aquarium. This is where uh, there's going to be a piece of pipe uh, in the tank, and this is where the water will leave the tank, go up and over, uh, down and out. And so there will be a valve right here, and that valve in the off position, uh, once water is gone through this pipe, it'll keep water in this pipe. And then when, and I, what I'm going to do is connect a hose adapter right here. And so then I can bring a, a garden hose in, set it up, drag it out to the front lawn, and then uh, uh, open this valve, water will start to flow. And if I did nothing else, water would end up draining down to about this point. All right. So what I'm going to do, though, is have an infill, set another garden hose, and that'll keep the water level about its typical water level. Uh, but what it'll do is it'll cycle water from this end to this end, and it'll circulate through that way. And it, it'll be uh, essentially a full water change, and I can do that daily if that'll help encourage these things to spawn. So it's all going to be out of PVC pipe, easy to work with, easy to cut, easy to glue. And then at this point, though, uh, this was the part I was, you know, thinking about trying to figure out. It could just be an open piece of pipe, but then, you know, anything can get sucked through and that's not what I want. And ultimately, I'd like to get shrimp going in this tank. I've had a rough time getting them started, but ultimately that's what I'd like to do would be get shrimp going in this tank. And then um, I think what Adrian was using was this plastic, kind of like a plastic uh, vent cap that would almost go on the uh, the intake of a hang on back filter and it might be one that you would put on the back of a tank where the tank was drilled um, you know just to keep fish from going through and into the into the wherever into the drain or into the sump whatever you know wherever but it, it was also fairly uh, fairly wide slots and so what I came up with I used to paint houses once upon a time for for a living and uh, there's something called an airless sprayer, and you stick uh, one end of this airless sprayer into a five gallon bucket of paint, and the other end's got a nozzle on it, and somewhere in between there's a pump. And it pumps paint out. And 
the part that goes into the bucket of paint is called the pickup tube. And on the bottom of the pickup tube, there's a mesh screen that uh, works to keep big chunks of stuff out so the nozzle on the spray gun doesn't get clogged. Well, that's what I thought I'd use. And here it is. Uh, it's a fairly fine mesh. And I'm guessing the littlest of little shrimp could get in there if it wanted to. And this is three quarter inch male threads. Now here's where I blew it. Because what I forgot to get was, it's called a female adapter. And essentially what it is, is like a PVC coupling, threaded inside one end and slip like this, the other end where you just glue it up. And then this end would thread over. Well, I blew that, forgot it. So I'm gonna have to go get, go get that part. In the meantime, I'm gonna build this thing and I will show you what's going on here, how it works. So assuming I got my measurements right, I need one piece that's 19 inches and I've got it marked. And I'm going to use this pair of uh, PVC pipe cutters. And if you've never used one of these, they're a ratchet. And so they open up and ultimately they ratchet tighter over, to, you know, over the piece of pipe and, and the cutting blade goes through the PVC. Um, I find it's easiest to start this with, uh, get the blade lined up. This is an old pair. So they don't necessarily cut perfectly per perpendicular, but they still work. Get it uh, where you want it to be, and then start to squeeze and give it a little twist. Kind of get it started, and then squeeze and make sure the ratchet here, I'm hoping we can all see this, the ratchet here engages, and we squeeze, back it off, let the ratchet engage, squeeze, back it off, let the ratchet engage, squeeze, back it off, let the ratchet engage, and there it is, and it's a nice clean cut with no burrs, okay? The burrs are important, especially if you're doing, uh, you know, a circular airline. You don't want any of the burrs in there because they will plug your air valves. So anyway, that's one, that's 19 inches. And I need another one, 14 inches. And here is 14 inches. There we go. And then I'm gonna dry fit these. This one's gonna be on the outside of the tank, the 19 inch one, all right? And at the top will be an elbow. And at the top of the 14 inch, this will be inside the tank, will be an elbow. And they will connect like this. Get like there, there we go. I gotta get way back for that to happen, don't I? So I'm going to lay these out, and then it'll probably be a lot easier to uh, to show you what I'm trying to do. And then what I got to do is get a measurement for the width here in between. And then on the bottom of the long piece, this is going to go, that, that other elbow is going to go off to the side of the tank, and then ultimately to the drain. So let's pick up there. Let me put... Uh, get some more measurements and I'll be back. All right, so let me walk you through it. Got all the pieces cut, kind of configured. Um, there's the inlet. This is where water's gonna go in through that screen and hopefully that'll keep things out. And ultimately that's the piece I need to replace. That should be a three quarter inch male adapter. And then a piece of pipe. This is inside the tank, coming up over the top of the tank and out the back side of the tank and down to the bottom on the outside of the back. And then it's gonna go across the shelf a little bit that the tank sits on and stick out past the rack that it's on. And then this end here is just gonna go um, across to the, to the outside of the, uh, the vertical uh, support for the shelf and that way I can zip tie it here. And then this way, it'll go out towards the front of the shelf to this male adapter and this garden hose adapter. So it's male pipe threads that'll connect to that and female hose threads. So the male end of a garden hose will attach to this and that's the easiest end to drag in. So, so that's why I chose to do that. So let me show you how that's gonna configure on the tank itself. So here we are back. So 
assuming I made all my measurements right, uh, we're going to start inside the tank here with that that uh, uh, that screen, and it'll come up the tank, over the back. Let me get the cord out of the way. All right, so down to the shelf here, out this way to the front of these these struts. Okay, that's where that T is going to be. And it'll just be a cap here, and I'll be able to ideally uh, zip tie it here. And then across here, I'll be able to zip tie it here, and then it will stick out, hopefully not too far where it's obtrusive. It will always be catching my hip or something, or Kathy will. Uh, and then we just took the garden hose right into that. That's the plan. It's a cunning plan. Let's just see if it really works. And it occurs to me something I forgot, and I've got the part somewhere in here right along this part here, I have to uh, put that ball valve in. So <laughs> that's a must. Otherwise, the tank's gonna be all over the floor. So we gotta put the ball valve. We gotta count for that too. All right, this is the ball valve. There's no particular flow, doesn't matter. They go either way. And it's a quarter turn. When, um, when the uh, valve handle is parallel to the valve, to the pipe, it is on. And when it, I'm gonna have to stick this somewhere to be able to do that. When it's turned perpendicular, it's off, okay? So actually, if you're using these in a live situation where you got water going through them on a regular basis, you can actually throttle it a little bit. And by that, what I mean is just a partial turn and it slows the water down a little bit. It's probably not the best, but it works. There's other, other types of valves. Let me see if I can turn that a little more. Uh, it's barely open now. You can see the light coming through there. So that's a way to do that when you're you know, just so I could do that also with this. I can slow the flow down when I'm doing a water change at this end. Okay. Um, so there we go. So now what I got to do is accommodate for that length. And these are just the wrong valve. Now that'll work. Uh, it's threaded. I want it slip. Just anyway. That'll work. So I got to account for uh, this much thread on each side. So I've got to take out about, uh, oh, I guess about an inch. Let's find out. You know, like any other good plumbing job, it, it seems like it's a minimum three trips to the hardware. Yeah, so I got to take out about an inch here. So that should do it. So we'll get back. It occurs to me I actually have to take out more than an inch. I've got to take out... Um, about because i've got a the pipe's going to go back to this port this part and then this threads in here uh had i'd have bought a, a glue valve or a slip valve uh, i wouldn't need these two fittings fortunately i've got those so i've got to take out a couple inches so just take it off at one end figure out what i need um and we'll go with that all right so i cut this end off that should be good and i figure i'm going to cut this end uh, after it's all pretty much set up. So I'll know better just how long I need to run this out. I might even run it back a ways um, so that way this part doesn't stick out past the edge of the shelf. That might be a better idea. So a lot of, a lot of good design is on the fly. So that's what we're doing. And I'm not above making mistakes and that's why I don't mind sharing them with you. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do just cause is put some Teflon tape on these fittings fittings turn in into the uh, receiving fitting clockwise so we want to make sure we put the tape on in the same direction um, so that way when we spin it in it doesn't push off so start with a little piece of tape and then the way I like to do it is have the tape come off the bottom so that way I can just put a little pressure with my middle finger there and, and just sort of wrap it and I'll do maybe three or four turns And that's that one. And just pinch and pull, and then just sort of rub it in, gets it into the threads. Really acts more of a lubricant than a sealant. Uh, and then start these. And then what I'm gonna need is a wrench to finish them. Probably not. I could probably 
they probably be good just hand tight too. Because only one end of these or this valve is going to be under pressure all the time. And I wouldn't really call it pressure, but it's going to have water standing in it. So we really don't want it to leak. Let me get a wrench. So I got these pair of channel locks that should do. And I want to make sure I'm going the right direction here. And these technically only work in one direction. So I think that's going to be plenty of tight. That should be good. And that's this length then. And because these didn't go in all the way, and I don't expect them to, um, I don't want to crack a fitting. Um, now, that'll uh, taking that last measurement will be more beneficial. This is the piece that'll go into, into this here, into that T. And that's kind of arbitrary, the length on that. And I want to make sure that the valve is pointing outwards uh, so I can easily access it. I don't want to make sure, I don't want to bury it in the back towards the shelf. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll move on here. I need those uh, channel locks. Or adjustable spanners, I think, in some. Uh, so this is uh, a blue glue. And it's supposed to be good. It's, it's a medium body. Uh, the, these uh, PVC cements come in a, uh, light, medium, and heavy body. Uh, light, really runny, uh, heavy, really thick, and mediums in between. Um, and I've been using this for years, and I honestly couldn't tell you why. I think we use this when I was doing landscape irrigation because it would work on wet pipe. When you're doing repairs, water's coming out, and it'll still, it'll still work. So that's why I've been doing that. Now, a lot of people will wear, and I don't have any of the white cotton work gloves that are disposable. Those are good. I don't know if I'd use any of the plastic or nitrile or anything like that because it might melt it. Uh, what we're going to do here, the whole idea of this is to um, create a chemical weld between two pieces of plastic. It literally melts them together. It makes a good solid weld. In this case, we're not under pressure. It's not like a city water main. So we really don't care uh, that much about it. But we still want it to fit and, and still want it to uh, uh, seal tight. We don't want leaks. Um, and let's see what else here um good ventilation got a fly that's bugging me here hang on just a minute i'm going to grab a little sheet of plywood and i'll show you why in just a second okay that plywood's going to come in handy in just a minute so i'm going to start at the end where the water goes in we'll just work our way all the way out to the front okay so there's also another part here uh, there is this PVC primer, and it's nasty, and it's really liquidy, and it's purple, uh, so it stains uh, the pipe, so you can kind of see where you put it. Uh, it stains concrete really well, too. Uh, I think it eventually, you know, three or four days, it's, I, I believe it's photosensitive, and three or four days, it pretty much uh, dissipates the stain, you know, if you get it on concrete. Still, and it gets on your, you don't want to get it on your skin. Uh, the only time I ever use this really is on really dirty pipe when I'm working on sprinkler repairs, or you really have to use it when you're working on pressurized mainline. But otherwise, uh, you know, if you're building uh, an air loop system, whatever, you do not need primer. A lot of people will use it, and that's great. It's a great preference, but you do not need it, okay? So just FYI. So PVC cement. And always glue both sides. So in this case, we're gonna glue the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting, all right? And yeah, it's messy. So I try and scrape up a, a fair amount off the dauber just so it's not running everywhere. And all the way around the pipe, and a lot of times what I'll do if I'm thinking, I'll be holding on to the fitting too, so I can get them both real easy. So inside the fitting, around the pipe, okay? Then you're going to push both pieces together, twist, and hold. If you don't hold, it'll push itself apart. There's that chemical reaction going on. So you want to give it a few seconds, and that's good. And then try and uh, wipe off some of the excess. It's not necessary, but it doesn't hurt. You know. And if 
Uh, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned the glues, the different bodies, but they also come clear and gray. And, and if you're concerned about this showing um, the blue stain from the, the glue, you might want to use a clear glue and you can get that at the home centers as well. Okay, so now we're going to put this piece in. And same thing, let's hold on to it here and go around the, the little piece of pipe and in the fitting and stick these together. And it's kind of hard to get a good twist on a little short piece of pipe, but you do the best you can. And such, since it shows short, push down on it to make sure it's all the way in, that it's seated all the way. And hang on to, you know, like, I don't know, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, you know. And that should be good. And it is. Okay. And then I'm going to put these together. Okay. So same thing. And unless the pipe's really dirty, you don't need to sand it or anything. Uh, you don't need the primer. The primer or deglosses the pipe and it, and it softens the plastic. So it really does help the bond. But again, that's really only crucial when you're working under pressure. Okay, put that together, give it a twist, give it a hold. And in 10, 15 seconds, something like that, it's done. And give it a wipe. All right, now the, here's where the board comes in. So, do this so I can get these two pieces as parallel as possible. Around the pipe, inside the fitting, almost uh, push these two together. And then I'll push them both on the board here. And I'm pretty confident there that uh, the two legs are, are parallel to one another and not offset just a little bit. This kind of connection here in irrigation is a great way to go around weird corners too. Just two elbows. You can get any corner you want. Okay, so that's done. All right, so now I'm gonna need that again. Um, let's see, this time, I wanna make sure I get this right. We're going into the tank and then up and over and out the tank. So I want this elbow to come out facing forwards like, like this, okay? So I'm gonna get something here real quick. Get a little roofing square, and hopefully that'll help. Um, fitting, piece of pipe. Nice thing is, and I, I did this recently, I was doing an irrigation repair around the house here, uh, and I blew it in a pair of channel locks. You can take the piece of pipe apart if it's still relatively soft. Okay, so I put that around. So, I want that relatively and I think that's good. So, once again, give it a wipe. All right. Now, when Adrian did this, he was doing it with what I think it was the black polyethylene pipe, the drip irrigation pipe. That works perfectly well, too. Um, but I'm guessing he had some laying around. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think you have to buy like a 50 foot roll. And I really didn't need that laying around here for any, or at least any time for, for a while. I don't know. We're going to redo the landscape here and the irrigation. I don't know if I'll be doing much drip or not. So inside the fitting, around the pipe, push and twist. Give it a hold and let go and then give it a wipe. Okay, so that is out of the tank, around the corner, or back down to the bottom, around, uh, pointing out towards the side of the shelf. So now the next piece 
is this T fitting. All right. And it's going to go into the side outlet, right? This is typically the direction of flow in irrigation, and this is a side outlet. So once again, around the piece of pipe, inside the fitting, put it in, give it a twist, and I want that to be as perpendicular as possible. And I think we got it. And there we go so far. Okay. Um, and just for, you know, what's in giggles, before we go any further, let's dry fit that or check it on the tank. Well, that's not bad. I missed the measurement by about, I don't know, maybe about an inch down there. I really wanted it to rest on the wood, but that'll be all right, because once this is connected on both ends here, um, then I'll be able to uh, secure it with the zip ties like I was talking about. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take a measurement off this to, to make sure the piece of pipe I cut is good, and if not, I will cut another one. So what I did was I cut about an inch off of that and glued the cap on. And then I think we can glue this part into place. All right, so here we are. And it's going to glue onto this side, going the short distance back to the shelf frame. So it's uh, same thing. A little bit of glue on the pipe. And a little bit of glue in the fitting. Make sure you cover the surfaces. The depth on three quarter inch fittings, the, the pipe will go back about one inch. So I push it in until I feel it stop and twist and hold. And that should be good. Yeah, let's give it a wipe. All right. So then the next part is putting the valve on. So I'm going to glue this little short piece into the valve assembly first, and then we push the whole thing in. And again, with, with a valve like this, it doesn't matter. If it was a check valve, something used to prevent backflow of water, they're directional, and there will be an arrow on it that says flow, and that's the direction you want to make sure the valve. So if the flow's going this way, if water tries to go back, it'll stop. That that's the, the for a check valve. Uh, irrigation valves are the same way. They have a direct. They're directional, so you want to pay attention to that. Okay, so same thing here. A little bit of glue in the fitting on the pipe. That's the nice thing about using this. There's no chance of getting glue back inside the valve, which is probably a good thing. Push it in until it stops, give it a twist, and hold on. Okay. And then same thing over here. Let me bring this into view. Nope. Is that good? Yep. All right. So let's see. Same thing. Doesn't matter. Fitting first, pipe first, whatever you like, whatever's comfortable, whatever works. It's, it changes sometimes, whatever's the most convenient at the time. And again, I want this, the handle, I want it pointing out because this thing's going to go this direction. So I want easy access for the handle. Think about that when you're doing this. Okay. And then I think what I'm going to do when I'm all done with this is spray it, spray it black, and it'll it'll hide better. And that's probably why Adrian used the black poly. I think that that helped anyway because you know it's more uh, I don't know more obscure, less obscure. I have to look up obscure now. So anyway, so that's that so far. So now we got to take that last measurement to see how long it needs to be from here out to the end of the shelf. Okay, so there it is, it's in. And that was no easy task. Uh, so what I'm gonna need to do is get that female adapter to go on that uh, intake piece of pipe. 
before I attach all this permanently because otherwise I'm never going to be able to get it in there because it's got to go in a kind of a weird angle. So, but it'll still work. Um, and I think we can make it work just uh, um, without gluing this, this last fitting. So let me put that piece of pipe in there. Gotta go get it. Before I do all that, I'm gonna get this ready here. So again, a little Teflon tape. Again, I like to have it upside down, right-handed. Um, and go around clockwise three, four times. And then this end, rubber hose washer. So that's obvious, that's the hose end. Threads are different. Hose threads are different than pipe threads. So pipe threads are a little bit finer. So this will go on here now. Okay. I think that's a good seal. Yeah, I think so. And then I'm gonna glue this to the piece of pipe at this end. I'm not gonna glue the other end right now until I get that fitting. But I do wanna try this and see if it's gonna work the way I hope. Push and twist. We'll pick up that excess glue. It's a messy job. PVC, so I usually end up covered in this stuff, especially when I'm working in trenches doing, you know, irrigation repair. Okay, so that end's ready to go. So let's go see how this will fit up. All right, so that obviously sticks out way too far because I didn't cut out this distance yet off of this piece of pipe. Um, and I may end up anchoring it back here on this diagonal. If I do it right here, I'll be able to just get the hose in here and not have it stick out at all. Um, and I, I think that may be the better thing. But I think I think it's worth a shot to try a, I was gonna say a dry run. We're working with water, right? So we'll try a wet run, hang on. Okay, so it's hooked up to the garden hose and it is blowing air out. I got a, kind of low pressure. Uh, so it's blowing air out of the this hose. All right, coming from the other side. And as soon as the air is done, I will shut it off and then we'll disconnect it from outside. Now it's just water, no more air. And when I shut it off, the one thing I really hope is that this fitting doesn't blow. It's dripping a little bit because it really needs to be glued. Let's see the little splashing down there. All right, I think we're just running water now. So that means from here, from the valve, all the way up to the tank should be charged. Now, I'm gonna set the phone down because I want to make sure this fitting there is not going to not going to blow apart on me when I shut the put the back pressure on it. We're going to go outside immediately and disconnect the hose. So far, so good. I'll be okay. So it blew. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is disconnect it here. And that takes the pressure off of this end and it'll drain and we'll go plug it back in and we'll see just how much it drains or how fast how well there we go thank god it's a garage floor um, let me set you down up here All right, so it's connected. So now the water should be coming from the tank out to this valve and stopped. So that means this portion should be charged. Now when I open the valve, 
water should start flowing. Now it's going to obviously the it's going to be water in the hose that's going to drain out first, but if it keeps going, there's air blowing. So that uh, there we go, getting rid of all the air that was in there when that piece of pipe blew off. And so now it's running steady. So it's working. Let's head back in there. I don't want to drain too much out. Cause then I got to fill it back up tonight. And then the only thing you got to do is get that fitting. So it is working. So there's my finger. So put the other garden hose on the other end of this and just let it fill while this is draining. And I think that'll be a really good system. So, and it's after six. So I thought I would just go ahead and spray this with a flat black. That'll help hide it. And then tomorrow I will go back to Home Depot and get that female adapter where this will connect up right here then. Um, I, I masked off the valve, it'll stay white. I don't know, maybe I'll look at it after I pull the tape off. Maybe I'll just mask the blue handle and paint everything else black. Uh, and it is a, a safe black. I've used it in that 75 gallon tank. I put some styrofoam pieces behind the rocks and under the rocks to protect the glass and I sprayed them all black. So it should be good. But I may have to cut this up somewhere to get this in the tank once this part's on because it was a tight fit getting this much in and out because of that angle brace. So I don't know how that's going to fly. But we'll, we'll see. We'll go through it together. All right, I think we're ready to pick up where we left off. Remember yesterday I said something about all plumbing projects are at least three trips to the hardware store. Well, three so far. Um, I needed to get the female adapter to, um, to thread this. See if we're seeing that, yep. To thread this screen into place. So a female adapter is just like a coupling, PVC coupling. It's slip or glue on one side, and the other side is threaded. Well, it turns out that these aren't the same threads. These are pipe threads, these are hose threads, and I did not catch that. Back to the hardware store, that was trip number three. And this is a hose adapter. Now, usually I get these, um, in metal when I'm connecting to the outside. Let's open this package. So I got this one this morning, which would have been trip number two. And so host threads by pipe threads, okay? Um, so the host threads, they're a coarser thread than pipe threads and they'll thread right in. And you don't need any Teflon, obviously, because this is going underwater. But they also have a hose washer, okay? So that's not a big deal. Uh, I wish I would have caught that earlier. So I picked up this one, and this is what will go in the tank at the bottom of the pickup tube, like that, okay? And then I thought, while I'm at it, back there in the background, let me get this out of the way, I thought I'd make one of those uh, fill tubes. So that's where this adapter is going to come in. So uh, I'm going to take you off the uh, tripod here for a minute. So pardon the shake. All right. So water comes in here through the garden hose thread and then uh, female uh, pipe threads to male pipe threads, piece of pipe, and then another male adapter into this threaded ball valve, another male adapter out of the threaded ball valve. Um, and then up to, and I can make that as long as I want, up to a, a, a three quarter inch slip by slip 90. And when I say slip by slip, that also means glue by glue. Okay, so glue, a glued fitting. And then down, and in this case, I think I'm gonna have put a T because I, I don't have any other kind of, water diffuser offhand, but I'm not going to glue it on. And I don't think I'm going to glue it on up here either. Um, 
and that way I can I can make a change if I find something I like. Now I went and watched a aquarium co-op uh, video with Dean bending uh, pipe, and he was bending. Let's see if I've got that. I think I might have thrown it back. Yeah, well, this this dark gray plastic is called Schedule 80. All this white stuff is Schedule 40. So Schedule 80 is a thicker wall, okay? And Schedule 80, uh, the, the pipe itself is threadable, okay? Typically, Schedule 40 pipe is not threadable. The fittings are, but the pipe is not, all right? So he had a long piece of this Schedule 80 that he was bending into a gooseneck, and I thought I didn't want to go through that. Now, I'm not sure my wife wanted me to be doing that over the kitchen stove. So I thought I would just go this route. It might not be as elegant as what Dean did, but this is gonna work just fine. So I'll show you that too, uh, as soon as we finish this first part. All right, so what I did was I adjusted the length of this piece of pipe that goes into the tank to accommodate this and to get it down the bottom of it at about the appropriate depth that I wanted at. So what I'm gonna do, and I don't normally need to do this, but since I went ahead and already painted it black, I'm gonna use a little of this purple primer and it should take the paint off. We shall see. I'll make a couple passes around it. Let's see if that works. Let me grab the rag. And voila. Or if you're an AI, it's voila. Okie doke. So now all we need is some little glue here. And the cap came off really easy because it's really important when you're done at the end of use to clean the clean the neck of the can off here. Because the, the glue builds up and um, makes it really hard to get a good tight seal and then you end up wasting a whole can of this stuff. And it's not cheap. Of course, wood is nowadays. So remember, around the inside of the fitting and then around the outside of the pipe. And then we'll push this in and hold it. All right, and that should be good. And the, the, the screen here, I just snugged it in tight, that's all. And again, no Teflon tape because uh, it's garden hose thread and it's got a rubber hose uh, washer inside here too. All that's really, what's the right word, superfluous? Because it's underwater and it's sucking water in. So if I was trying to pump water out, that might be a little different. But I'm not, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so that part's done and I got the black spray paint here. So just because I'm going to touch this up a bit. And I'm using a flat black for two reasons. Uh, it'll be less, it'll show less than a, a gloss black wood and two, that's the only one I have. So we'll just leave that handy because we'll keep using it. All right, so this is ready to go. Got to let that set, the, the glue and the uh, primer, or the, the, I'm sorry, the glue and the paint. Um, so we can unbutton this see if, if we want to keep the, the ball valve itself white or if we want to paint it. And to paint it, I'd have to uh, just mask the handle instead. Yeah, I don't know. Not pretty, is it? Kind of sticks out. Maybe we will paint it. So I'll tape it off and uh, give it a shot. I'm not going to worry about peeling the sticker off here, the, whatever it is, the barcode, because that's on the bottom side too. So, whoops, just knocked you guys crazy. All right, so I went ahead and put Teflon tape on these three male adapters. You already saw me do that. So I installed the one male adapter into this uh, hose fitting check your hose washer make sure it's in all the way and you want this as tight as it'll go um 
and that's all the way that's bottomed out in this so that's that's it because uh, you don't want this leak this is going to be under pressure when you turn the garden hose on the ball valve here is going to stop the water and then it's going to go up and around and into the tank okay and, and i don't know if i said it. the reason i'm going to use a t at this end uh watching that dean video uh this morning uh, that's what corey uses into a t and there's all kinds of fancy things but one of these days maybe i'll find one otherwise i won't uh those uh those screens for the airlesses are a little pricey. I could use one of those, but as a diffuser, I'm not sure how well that would work as a diffuser. Um, but we're going to go with the T. Uh, water will come down and split out in two directions instead of washing out all the sand and gravel down below or the substrate, whatever you got. Okie doke. So what we're going to do is, uh, first thing I'm going to do is put these two uh, um, elbows together or 90s, whatever you like. And the way I'm going to do that, I've got a short piece of pipe laying around here that I was using. Why was I using it? Well, I'll tell you if I could find it. Oh, here. It was, uh, oh, and you know what? This is, uh, this is different, too. This is class 200. This is typical for sprinkler lines. It's not, it's only under pressure when you open the valves and water's coming out the sprinkler. So it's not under really much more than about 30 pounds per square inch. But I don't know if you guys can see the difference here. Schedule 40, much thicker wall, class 200. This would work for, for uh, this situation um, beyond the valve and into the tank. But since I got all schedule 40, I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. So what I need to do, if uh, figure out, I wanna get these fittings as close as I can together. All right, because they're just going to drop over the tank and that distance, where are we there? That distance should be wide enough to drop over uh, any of the tanks I have. All I have are the Aquion uh, Petco tanks. Um, so if you take a tape measure, if you look inside the fittings, you'll see a little ridge. And that is about where my finger is there. That's a stop. So if you put your tape measure in and hit it, measure to the stop, it's just about one inch on these three quarter inch fittings. So if I got a piece just, just about two inches or just a hair short of two inches, that should work. So let's do that. So trusty Sharpie. And I'm gonna go one and uh, seven eighths inches. And then I will uh, just cut right on the line because this is not cabinet making. Give a squeeze. And there we are. And once again, this side is not under pressure, so I don't need primer. like before, glue the pipe and glue the inside of the fitting in whichever order you like. And then give it a push, give it a twist, give it a hold. And that should be good about now. And then uh, wipe off the excess. I might end up painting this thing black too. Kind of like that. Um, okay, that's that end. Now, same thing, and I'm going to use this piece of wood so I make sure that these two pieces are not twisted in any way. I want them as, you know, parallel or perpendicular or whatever it is. Probably as parallel as possible. So same, same. A um, little glue on the pipe. A little glue on the fitting. No, missed a spot inside there. Check your, you know, your uh, fittings. It's easy to see what you're doing on the pipe, but make sure you take a peek inside the fitting, make sure you're getting all. And, and again, stick it in, give it a twist, and I'm putting it on so both of the holes sit flush on the wood. So now I know they're straight, or I can be pretty well assured. Okay, and they should be tight. So now I'm gonna extra glue. And that should be good. 
and it's dripping down the inside there. Not a big deal. All right, so now I'm going to put this part together, and I don't know how long I want that. Uh, I don't really want it too long because a lot of what I have are 20-gallon tanks, and they are only, I'm going to find out, they're 17 inches deep. And I have uh, five of them on the bottom shelf on my rack, and that's another seven inches. Uh, so what is that, 24 inches? So I certainly don't want to go that full. So I think probably if uh, this whole thing was, uh, oh gosh, I don't know. What do I got here? About 18 inches. Uh, complete. That should be good. So that means I need a little piece here, a little bit longer piece here. So let's do this one down here. And again, about an inch into the fitting. So I need about oh, three, three and a half inches, three and a quarter inches. Once again, get the trusty Sharpie. Three and a quarter inches. I gotta get a new pair of pipe cutters. These have seen a lot of miles. And they were Home Depot specials. They're not real expensive. They're worth having if you're cutting a lot of PVC. So now here's something to remember this part this is see if we can see that here let me move the whole thing a little over this part where my finger is is where the water is coming in okay so everything up to this ball valve if i shut this ball valve off and go do something this is under static pressure then and that means it's just the full pressure of whatever's coming in through your your uh your water main and it could be 60 or 70 pounds per square inch. Uh, or, so you wanna make sure that this part is all primed and glued. Not just glued, but primed and glued. So I'm gonna do the pipe first. This is the tail end of a can of primer, and I think that's why this is so dark because a lot of the dye has settled to the bottom. All right, so that's that. And because I've got a fitting on the underside of this, I'm gonna hold it upside down so I don't run a lot of the primer into the fitting. I don't wanna melt uh, my rubber hose washer in there. So we'll do that, give it a few twists. And look, and it's good, I got a good coverage in there. And then same thing here. Uh, and again, I talked about the ball valves. Uh, they're not directional, so pick an end, it doesn't really matter. And put it in, give it a twist, and you don't need to re-dip because this thing holds a lot. And so that's fully primed. All right. Ah. And I'm on the tailgate of my truck outside, and this stuff still just reeks. Um. All right, so now a little glue. So again, round the pipe. And the true test is when you stick this all together and if it doesn't blow apart, <laughs> under pressure, success. Yeah, okay. So then same thing here. A little bit of glue in the fitting. And again, I'm holding it upside down so glue doesn't go uh, inside the ball valve because so I don't want to glue the ball valve shut. And then around the pipe. It just occurred to me, I was not paying attention when I did the ball valve or the this and uh, yeah, I'm all right. So and give it a twist and give it a hold. And that should be good. Wipe the excess glue off. All right. So 
So now, what did I say? 18 inches complete. So here's the, the bend. So tape measure. Put that down there. This up here. That's good. So I need about seven and a half inches. So here we go. I've been wanting one of these for a long time and I could not tell you why I haven't acted on it. I actually went looking to see if you could buy one and you can. I guess Hyger makes the uh, Python. And then it's got all this drain hose and a bunch of other stuff that I really didn't need right now anyway. So this seemed more, uh, more practical. And I am uh, fully versed in PVC. So usually anyway, pretty close. So on, in this case, I think I want the, the ball valve to the outside. So I want it this way. Yeah, I think I want it to the outside. So I'm going to try and line it up as... Um, as best as possible. So now I'm past the ball valve and this is only getting water when the ball valve's open and it's immediately flowing out the other end. I don't need primer on this. So all we need is glue. And again, same thing. Look inside the fitting. Hold it down a little bit. You don't want to Again, you don't want to run glue into the into the valve. Push it in, give it a twist, give it a hold. Okay. And then here we go. And around the pipe. inside one of the elbows. And I'm just going to eyeball line it up as best as possible. Hold it there for a minute so it uh, so it doesn't push itself apart. Remember this is a chemical reaction and what's happening here, we're melting the two pieces of uh, pipe together with this sol it's a solvent cement. It's not just, you know, like Elmer's glue. So there we are. So now I think I want this part to come down into the tank. Not much more than a foot. Let's see how that is. Oh, that's even too far. I think maybe six inches is good because then this is going to go on the end of it. So I think a six inch piece, that'll take it down to about seven inches. And that's probably good for the size tank size. That probably even work in a five gallon tank. So what did I say, six inches? Um, so let's get the pipe, get the Sharpie. For this, I want to try just friction fit and see if that'll do me. And that way, if I want to change this part out, we're done. That's all that one takes. And here's where the garden hose goes. This is in the off position, perpendicular to the pipe. This is the on position, water will flow and it'll hit this as a diverter, shoot water out in two directions, and that should be it. This is what I'm talking about. Make sure that the glue can is cleaned up well around the rim here. So a lot of times it's just easier to get this out of the way, stand it up, but wipe the, the, that collar off. Clean it out of the threads, clean it off the top. This K 
keeps the glue fresh longer, but it also makes it a heck of a lot easier to open later. So even just a little bit of glue over time, it'll seal itself shut and you'll need a pair of channel locks or something to, uh, to open it. So there, that's it. So let's go uh, drop the, uh, the auto drain into the tank. And uh, I got a feeling I may have to pull out the hang on back filter and go in from the other direction. Cause this is, this is tight. So it may or may not work. So I'll let you guys watch that. All right, so I'm gonna give it a shot without taking the filter off. I did take the strainer off because that'll shorten the distance up here. And I was able to get this much of it in and out last night. And I did shorten this piece of pipe a little bit to compensate for the strainer and this fitting. So maybe it'll work. And I got to get this part behind this. If you're just on a fish stand or whatever, it should be a lot of, you know, if this wrap wasn't in my way, there we go. Now, just need to reach in, not trashing this poor little philodendron. And tighten the strainer piece, press that down. Now all I gotta do, is figure out where I want this. I cut a piece of shim to go right here against this, this strut, so I think I'll be able to end it right about here. Um, and that way it won't be sticking out out there. Hopefully that'll work. And I may have misspoke earlier. I think I called it an automatic drain system. I think Adrian called it a permanent drain line. So let's see, I want to cut this back so it's right about there. And so I'm eyeballing it to the fitting. And I'm sure you can't see it, but there is a mark there. So I'm gonna go cut that, grab the glue. All right, well, here we go. Got it cut down, got the glue. Got a rag on the floor hopefully about where it would drip when it drips, because it will drip. And I've got black paint on this. I'm not really worried about it too much. I'll go around a few times. That might get through a lot of the black paint. But it's, uh, it's only gravity, except for when I charge it that one time. After that, it'll always only be gravity. And then inside here, the fitting, And then give them a push, and I'm going to twist them a few times here. And it dripped right on the rag. Lucky me. It should be good. Let's seal this up. All right, and I'll be back with the shim. Okay, so I've connected three small zip ties because that's what I have in black got some white ones bigger white ones but I didn't want to use those if I didn't have to uh, and I've got uh, one set wrapped around the back here black on black on black hard to see but they're there I've got the level here I want to make sure this points down a little bit so it drains well not a big deal but I, I just want it to flow well and then I'm gonna put these three zip ties And this is the spacer I built. That'll go right through there. And assuming this fits, I might have to put a fourth zip tie. And that is okay. And when I was at Home Depot today, I was in the zip tie aisle and I was looking at all these. Got completely overwhelmed because the, the choices. So I just sort of let it go. Wish I'd have got some now. Um, so anyway, 
It's just a matter of uh, inserting one end in, into the other until they start to ratchet, and that's it. Um, but before I latch this down, since, that, since that's going to work for me, I've got plenty of room to put a garden hose here. I'm going to go spray paint those chunks of wood black. Okay, so the shins are black, so you can barely see them. Um, the only thing that's not black is this Teflon tape, and boy, you know, I wish I would have sprayed that, but too late. Maybe I'll figure out a way to do that without getting it everywhere. So I'm just going to wrap this, these four zip ties around here, uh, connect them, and hopefully this does the trick. And then I will clean off all the excess uh, zip tie, make it look a little more pretty. And you know what? Oh, I got to tighten this one in the back here. And if you ever want to adjust anything, a pair of scissors or wire cutters, whatever, zip tie cuts really easy. And that is that. So that's all done. So we did kind of, a, I was going to say a dry run, but it's all underwater, so it's kind of relatively a wet run. Um, so I need to hook up the garden hose to this, the live garden hose, to charge this. Um, and then when this valve, right now it's in the on position, par remember parallel to the, to the line. So one way or the other turns, let's see, there we go. So that would make it in the closed position, all right? So that would, that would stop it. So what we'll do, we'll connect the garden hose, turn it on, make sure this is open. It'll blow a bunch of air out and then water will start coming out. Then we'll shut that and then it's charged. Then I'll disconnect the garden hose uh, from the water supply and uh, I'm gonna leave it hanging out in the front lawn and then open this and it'll start a siphon. It'll start that siphon. I guess I could stick my face down there and suck on it too, but I'd rather do it the hard way with the hose. Um, and then the other part, uh, it's mostly done. I was uh, finished spray painting it. Let's go look at that. Let's leave that open. All right, so here it is complete. Remember, this is the end the garden hose will go into. The ball valve, right now it's in the on position, and it'll hang over the tank, kind of like this. I'll probably go hang it over the tank. Let's see how it works. Let's try it on this tank. This tank might be a little awkward here. Yeah, see how close that is. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just have to let it, let the garden hose sit one way or the other. Uh, but it'll work. That'll work. But that's the kicker right there. That's that's all there is to that. And so because I couldn't let it go, put a little bit of tape around that fitting, and held the little uh, piece of notepad paper behind it, and just sprayed what I could see of that white Teflon because it stood out. It made me crazy. And then this should hang right here with a garden hose on the bottom. There we are. That's the plan. All right, so I've connected the hose. It's live. It's blowing bubbles. And as soon as it's done blowing bubbles and water's coming out, then I will shut this valve off and this, uh, this permanent drain will be charged. Now the bubbles are getting finer, finer, and I'm gonna say that's probably it. Last of the bubbles. I'll just let it run for a bit, it won't hurt anything. Okay. It's, I'm gonna call that, call that good. And then we'll shut this off. So now that's in the off position. And that should mean from here to here is fully charged. I'm sorry, I'm pointing from here to up here is fully charged. So in other words, there's water throughout this whole piece of pipe, okay? Now remember this back piece of pipe really doesn't do anything except support it, that's all. And 
Look at a leak. That's at the threads. I'm glad it's on that side because that means it's only going to leak when uh, um, uh, when I'm draining. So what I'm going to do is try and tighten that up a little bit more. So it's not an important leak, but I'd rather not. And it's leaking from the hose here too. So, but garden hoses often leak. So I'm going to get my finger out of your way. There we go. So we can take care of that. All right, well, I tightened it up a little bit. You can see the wrench marks. It's still just dripping, but again, I'm not gonna worry about it because it's only gonna drip when they're, because it's under pressure right now from the garden hose. Um, and I cinched up on that, and I think that one might have quit dripping. Uh, and ideally, nothing goes wrong. I should never have to charge this again unless I drop the water down below this point. And I don't foresee that anytime in the near future. So that should not be a, de a big deal. So I'm just going to not worry about this. If it was on a, I still wouldn't worry, even if it was on a hardwood floor, because I don't think it's going to leak when we're just draining. So we'll see, because that's next. All right. Let me hook up another garden hose to the, the fill now and see if I can get balance. Water coming in, water going out. And we'll do a water change, let it run for about an hour. And then just for fun, let's let's make sure this, uh, we're gonna get water out of here. I'm gonna turn the valve. There's water, it's draining. That's it. Takes a second for the water to quit draining out of there. And that's it. Now I gotta do is hook up another hose for the drain hose. And I'm gonna use the one I just took off for the fill hose. Okay, so I've got an old hose hooked up to the drain. It's still in the off position. I've got the new fill uh, hanging on the tank and it's in the on position. So I'm gonna go connect those houses outside and we'll see how it plays out. All right, so it's blowing air. And ideally, I'd kind of like to match the flow of what's coming in and what's going out. So what I'm gonna do is out, here we go, we're starting to get water now. Blew all the air out of that hose. Um, I'm gonna let this fill uh, up to the desired level, and then I'll open the, the discharge side. Now, a note on the discharge side, wouldn't need the hose, if uh, this extra hose, if I had a way to plumb this in, um, you know, out a wall or into a sump or something, but I don't. So I suppose at some point I could I could rig this into a sump down here. It's all the camping gear that we haven't used in a lot of years. So that'd be a good home for a sump maybe. But I don't know if a sump's necessary for 175 gallon tank. It might just be a fun project though. So that might be it. Then I, what I would need would be a, uh, a submersible pump and, and the sump tank. So who knows? And I think I saw Mix Cali Fish Keeper build a really cool sump out of uh, some interesting parts. So there's alternatives for that as well. So the water's slowly filling up here. Uh, I'm going to go, I could turn it up a little bit, then I can throttle it. And in fact, that's what I think I'm going to do. Then I can throttle it at that ball valve. Okay, so it's off right now. And it's leaking. Oh my god. Uh, Male joints are leaking. I can tighten that up later. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Thank God for garage floors. So I'm going to open this a little bit. Now I can control the flow here. Uh, I can reduce the pressure coming in. But on this end, on the discharge, all I can really do is reduce the flow going out. I cannot increase it. I can increase it over there, but I cannot increase it over here. Um, the best I can do would be to slow it down over here if it gets to be too much. So that's still blowing air. And it's getting pretty full now. So I'm going to open this now. And let's see how much the water cha drop changes. And, uh, I can uh, 
adjust the two, two sides, uh, one or the other. Yeah, it seems like it's going down a little more than it's, uh, than it's coming in. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, open up a little more flow here. There we go. And just keep an eye on it until, uh, until I see how it works. And then, next time I set it up, I'll have a pretty good idea of where, kind of depends on how far, this is connected to the hose bib out, you know, out around the front. So it kind of depends on, on a, yeah, it's still going down faster than it's coming up. So we'll open up a little more. I'm just keeping an eye on the water line in relation to uh, the bottom of that black molding. Seems like it's working so far. Open it up just a little more. And who knows, I may actually max it out here and have to go add some more, uh, uh, or let's try this. Let's slow this down. We can do that too. All right. So anyway, that's about the extent of it. I'm gonna have to play with this for a while to get it regulated to find a, the happy medium. And for you guys to be like watching paint dry, so I won't put you through that. What I will do is, uh, while I'm doing the editing, I will figure out what, what the parts cost, what this uh, fill rig cost, and how much I spent on the uh, permanent drain. And I'll put those on the video. Um, I'm gonna slow this down some more because it's still dropping faster than it's filling. So I'm about half closed. About half closed. That'd be about a 45 degree angle. Remember 90 degrees perpendicular to pipe, it's closed completely. So I'm gonna close it maybe just a hair more. And I want this to, uh, like it to catch up. Alrighty, well that's it. Like I said, I'll post uh, uh, on the video what, what the costs were for the main parts. You know, it's gonna vary depending on what you use. And if you use polyethylene pipe, that'll vary too, if you have it. Like I said, with the polyethylene, I'm not sure, but I think you have to buy it in 50 foot rolls at Home Depot or Lowe's or, you know what, <laughs> Lowe's. I went there to get that fitting I needed for down here and I get all the way back there and they've hidden the plumbing aisle in the far back corner of the store. And that's a popular place. And uh, I will not go back to Lowe's, you know, maybe for the, they got a nice garden center. <laughs> but beyond that, you know, I'm kind of done. So anyway, I'm gonna chat my opinion, sorry. Um, I just close that down a little bit more. Let's see if it starts. It seems like it's it's not getting any lower, and that's good. And I don't want it to get higher and then go over because that would suck. So we'll find that spot. And then maybe what I'll do is, well, like I said, it depends on how how much you open the uh, the faucet out, you know, where the hose is connected, where the water's coming in from. As a buddy of mine would call it the Gazinda line, and and this would be the Gazada line because this is where the water goes out of, and that's where it goes into. Okay, yeah, anyway. And then once it's done, gotta make sure I add, uh, I use API, so the API tap water conditioner, so wh whatever decor you need to use, make sure you do that after this. It'd be real easy to forget it with this, because I usually uh, just add it while I'm doing a regular water change, but for me, this will not be a regular water, well, not yet. This is not a regular occurrence. This is all new to me. So. If you start doing this too, don't forget the, uh, the dechlor, whatever dechlor you're using. All right, so here's a PS. So now that I took it, I've taken it all apart, had it, I finished, I put the water, uh, the tap water conditioner in, and uh, I think I've had a, another idea what I want to do here. 
I'm going to cut this off here. I've already marked about where I just scratched into the pipe or the paint. And I am going to, and I've already put this together. So I am going to put this piece of pipe here. All right. And I'll hose tie it, or, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, zip tie it to that. So that'll get rid of the shim. Uh, and I'm going to have, I'm going to move this piece underneath here. Um, so it'll be pointing down. So that way the hose will come up. It'll be less of a trip and fall walking through the garage here. So I'll walk you through it. I've already made those, those couple pieces and you know how that works now. You've seen it. So I'm just going to cut this zip tie or, and now the, yeah, the shim is no longer necessary really. And then I'm going to cut this piece of pipe right about here. So that was design on the fly. The whole thing's been kind of design on the fly. And, and that's okay. That's the fun of this kind of stuff. So now, let's put these together. Inside the fitting. And I got the wrong fitting there. But that'll work too. So we'll just do it all at once. Around this piece of pipe inside that fitting and around this piece of pipe okay stuff stays wet long enough that you can do that and work with it so that goes there and this goes here and i want it pointing straight down now once again this is just dead pipe it's just stri strictly for support and i got it dripping down on that rag again so it's not all over the floor We'll pick up the glue drips. And I already threaded a, a piece of a zip tie through here. So let's pull that up nice and tight. There we go. That should keep that. I'll, I'll trim it later. And now that's it. That's how long that took to to change the orientation now the, the hose will just come straight up into it no reason it shouldn't work now i'm going to touch that up i'll just stick a little piece of cardboard behind it that should work got some over here on this side too and here quick and easy uh, modification to the whole system there that was easy that was that was a lot of fun too I hope you guys will try it out all right so anyway as always uh, really appreciate it uh, if you haven't before you like the stuff do me a favor and give me a subscribe I really appreciate it, it helps the channel grow and uh, and then uh, also uh, give it a like and you can even share it if you want to and again, a shout out to uh, Adrian's Fish Room, uh, another YouTube channel, because that is where I got this idea. And I'm really grateful for the idea here. Um, this will make doing this a lot easier. I'll be able to cycle water through here, uh, you know, maybe every day for a week or so. And maybe that'll encourage the quarries to, to uh, spawn again. So we'll see. So anyway, once again, if you haven't, like I said, go find Adrian's Fish Room. Thanks all. Uh, let me rephrase that. Thanks all. Thanks for watching.